Hi everybody and welcome to Python Basics. Let's begin. In this room, you'll get hands-on with and learn about the scripting programming language Python. Although programming isn't required to succeed in security, it's a great skill to have. As the scripting for Pentester's uh, module demonstrates, being able to program allows you to create security tools and create quick scripts that will aid you in hacking, as well as defending and analyzing. Uh, this room will teach you variables, loops, functions, data structures, if statements, and files. You'll be using the code editor on the right-hand side to complete exercises and solve challenges. This room will teach you the basics, just enough to give you the knowledge to make your basic uh, scripts. Uh, if you want to use your development environment to code, download Python on the official website, which gives you an IDE integrated development environment to code in. In programming, syntax is important as it describes the structure of a valid programming language. In simple terms, syntax tells the computer how to read code using rules that control the structure of symbols, punctuation, and words of a programming language. Okay, uh, let's see what we need to do here. Uh, so, run what's currently in the code editor uh, by clicking the green run code button. Uh, and move on to the next task. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the run code um, button right here and what we see in the print, uh, print statement right here, so the string right here uh, will be, um, yeah, we're going to see it right here in the console, okay? So the output is going to be learn security we try hacking. Okay, so let's click on run code and there you have it, here, here is our output. Uh, so let's click on complete it and move on to the next uh, task, which is hello world. To begin, let's create a simple program that outputs some text. As you can see from the example code block above is just one line shown on line two. So this line, line right here, right? And when we run this code, it will output the text hello world. So basically what we just did in task uh, one, right? Uh, so yeah, let's break this down. In the example, um, line one is a comment, uh, a line starting with a hashtag uh, symbol and is not uh, run by the computer, okay? So this is not going to be run by the computer. This is a comment, okay? Uh, a comment is written by the programmer you to help you uh, to help other people reading the code understand what is going on we can control what is output to the screen by using the print statement anything inside of the parentheses um, of the print statement uh, will be output however because we are printing printing a string more on data types later in this room uh, we have to put them inside of quotations uh, please note, this room's examples are for Python 3. Okay, so on the code editor, print hello world. What is the flag? Okay, so let's go inside the quotation marks, in, which are inside the parentheses of the uh, print statement, and type hello world. Okay, and let's, oops, let's see, world, like this. Okay, and now let's run the code. And we see our output here, which is hello world. And of course, our flag. So let's copy the flag and paste it right here and submit and move on to the next uh, task, which is mathematical operators. Let's now cover mathematical operators and how they can be applied to Python. Like a calculator, uh, there are operations such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Using Python, we can code our calculator. After all, programming is just uh, writing rules for the computer to follow, uh, given specific inputs and conditions. Uh, the table below shows the different operations. Yes, we can see that right here. Uh, now that we know uh, basic mathematical operators, let's move on to comparison uh, operators. These play a big part in Python and will be uh, built upon when we look at loops and if statements. These operators are used to evaluate a program's condition at a particular state. Okay, so we can uh, take a look at that here. Uh, and now let's move on to the um, uh, 
uh, to the challenges. So in this code editor, print the result of 21 plus 43. What is the flag? Okay, so what we need to do here, because we are not dealing with strings, but with numbers or, or math, uh, so we can just remove the whole thing right here. So not only the string hello world, but the quotes, um, uh, also, okay, so if you're dealing with uh, strings or words or sentences, use the quotation marks. If, you, if you're dealing with numbers or math like we are doing right now, uh, you know, you don't, need the, uh, you don't need the quotation marks, okay? So let's remo remove everything like this and just type 21 plus, let's see, plus uh, 43, 43 like this and we run the code. And here is our answer, which is 64. And here, here is our flag, which we can copy and paste right here. And we submit and move on to the next challenge here. So print the result of 142 minus 52. What is the flag? Uh, here we are going to do the same thing. So we type 140, let's see, 142. Uh, minus 52 uh, and we click on run code and we get 90 and uh, of course we get our flag which we can copy like this and we paste it right here and we submit and move on to the next challenge uh, which is let's see print the result of 10 uh, multiplied by 342 what is the flag okay so Again, we go inside the parenthesis and we type 10 multiplied multiplied by 342 uh, and we run code. So the, um, the result is 3420 and the flag is what we see right here, which we can copy, paste it right here, submit and move on to the last challenge in this task. Uh, let's see, print the result of five squared. What is the flag? Okay, so what we need to do here is again, of course, go inside the uh, parentheses and we type five and then we type, uh, oops, wrong. We type, uh, we're using, we are using the multiply, um, the multiply multiplication uh, operator uh, that we see right here, but we are going to use it two times, not only one, okay? Uh, and that will be, uh, so five and then two, right? So five to the power of two, right? Uh, so what we can do here is just uh, go right here and click on run code and we get our result, which is 25 and of course our flag which we can copy. Let me try again. Okay, this is not easy. Let's see, like this. And we paste it right here and we submit and we are correct, perfect. So let's move on to the next uh, task, which is variables and data types. Let's see. Variables allow you to store and update data in a computer program. You have a variable name and store data to that name. In the example above, we have two variables. The variable name uh, food stores the string words ice cream, while another variable called money stores a number 2000. Variables are powerful as you can change them throughout your program. The following example sets the age variable to 30. Then we increase this age variable by one, making the final variable data 31. Feel free to copy and paste uh, this into the editor, run the code and see its output. Okay, so let's do it uh, real quick. So take this, we copy, paste it right here. Let's see, try again like this and we run the code and yes, we get 31. Notice on line two, the way we update a variable on the left and we have the already created variable name H uh, followed by the assignment uh, operator. Uh, on the right, uh, we uh, have what we're setting the variable to. In our case, the H variable, uh, 
uh, which is currently set to 30, uh, is uh, being increased by one. Uh, let's talk about data types, which is the type of data being stored in a variable. You can store text or numbers and many other types. The data types uh, to know are string, used for combinations of characters such as letters or symbols, integer, whole numbers, float, numbers that contain decimal points or for uh, fractions, boolean, used for data that is restricted to true or false options, and list, series of different data types stored in a collection. Uh, okay, so let's see what we need to do here. So in the code editor, create a variable called height and set its uh, and set its initial value to uh, 200. Okay, so let's do that, and we can start from line two, uh, or you know what? Let's start from line one. So let's delete the comment. So uh, height, and we assign it uh, the number 200 like this. Uh, and we click on complete it. Uh, now uh, on, on a new line, add 50 to the height variable. Okay, no problem. So we can just type in height first and then the assignment uh, operator followed by the height variable uh, name uh, and which, you know, uh, the number 200 is assigned to and then followed by the, uh, let's see, where is the plus sign? Plus and then 50, right? So we're going to add 50 to uh, 200. Uh, so we can just click on complete it here. And on another new line, print out the value of height. What is the flag that appears? Okay, so let's use the print statement for that. So print, and then we need the parentheses. And of course, inside the parentheses, we type in the variable name, which is height, which is now uh, going to give us the uh, uh, the result, which will be 250, because 200 plus 50 is 250. So let's run the code and see if that's the case. Yes, that's correct. So 250, and we have our flag, which we can just copy and paste right here and we submit and now let's move on to the next task which is logical and boolean operators logical operators allow assignment and comparisons to be made and are used in conditional testing such as if statements um, and you guys can take a look at the um, logical operators right here uh, Boolean operators are used to connect and compare relationships between statements. Uh, like an if statement, conditions can be true or false. And we have the uh, Boolean operators uh, that you can take a look at or study a little bit closer. Let's look at a few Python code examples. Okay, so in the first example, we have the variable a, which is assigned uh, one. And here we have the uh, if statement below, which uh, says if a is equal to one or greater than 10, well then uh, print, uh, execute the print statement uh, that we see right here, which holds a string. So a is either one or above 10 is going to get printed um, here in the console, right? And the, in the next example, we have two variables. So the variable name, uh, which holds the string Bob and the variable hungry, which uh, which holds the um, and the boolean value true, uh, and if name is um, uh, is equal to Bob and hungry is equal to true, well the print statement uh, that we see right here is going to get executed. So what we are going to see in the um, in the uh, console is Bob is hungry, right? Because because um, both of those uh, are, uh, you know, uh, true, right? Uh, and uh, if name is equal to Bob and not hungry, right? And if hungry is true, okay? But then we use not. That means that then hungry turns to false. So that means if name is Bob, okay? And 
hungry is false, then execute this statement, which is Bob is not hungry, right? So this is what we're going to see in the um, in the console. And finally, else, well, it's it says it right here in the comment. If all other if conditions are not met, well, this is the print statement that is going to get executed. So not sure who this is or if they are hungry. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? Um, okay, so let's click on complete it and uh, move on to the uh, next uh, task, which is introduction to if statements, shipping project. Using if statements allows programs to make decisions. They let a program choose a decision based on a condition. Below is an example of how an if statement can be used to determine the section of code, which print statement to use. Uh, in the example, if you are younger than 17, the program will output the text, you are not old enough to drive. However, if you are over the age of 17, the program will output you're old enough to drive. Depending on a condition, in this example, it's the age variable, the program will run different code sections. There are some key components we note from our code example above. The if keyword indicates the beginning of the if statement, followed by uh, a set of conditions. The if statement is only run if the condition or sets of conditions is true. In our example, it's age um, below 17. If that condition is true, age is above 17, they made a mistake right here, so they meant below 17, the code within the if statement runs, right? So this right here will run, right? So if uh, they are below 17, which will make it true, right? The condition will be met. Then this is what is going to get printed. So they made a little mistake here. So yeah. So if the condition is uh, true, age is below 17, the code within the if statement runs. Per the example, uh, if certain conditions are not met, uh, the program can default to running code shown in the else part of the if statement. So this one right here. So if the person is above 17, then this code will, will uh, run, right? Uh, a colon uh, marks the end of the if statement. Note the indentation. Anything after the colon that is inde indented is considered part of the if statement, which the program will execute. Uh, if statements are essential in programming and will be something you use a lot. Okay, so let's see what we need to do here. In this exercise, we will code a small application that calculates and outputs the shipping cost for a customer uh, based on how much they've spent. In the code editor, click on the shipping.py uh, uh, tab and follow the instructions to complete this task. Okay, so shipping.py. Uh, so let's see, in this project, you create a program that calculates the total cost of a customer's shopping basket, including shipping. If a customer spends over $100, they get free shipping. If a customer spends below $100, uh, the shipping cost is $1.20 per, uh, per kilo uh, of the uh, basket's weight. Print the customer's total basket cost, including shipping, to complete this exercise. Okay, so uh, the customer, uh, we have the variable, uh, variables, two variables, so customer basket cost, which is $34, and customer basket weight, which is 44 uh, kilograms, right? Uh, so, so yeah, so let's begin. Let's just click on complete it here first. Uh, and now, once you've written the application in the code editor's shipping uh, shipping.py tab, a flag will appear, which is the answer to this question. Okay, so let's write the um, let's write the uh, the application. So what we need to do here is just uh, well, uh, we can start here first on line sixteen, uh, and. Um, you know, before we start writing the application, let's create a new variable. I'll, I'll just put it right here, 
well, actually it doesn't matter. I can actually delete the whole thing. It's, it's not a problem. So let's create a new variable and, and assign it the, um, uh, the shipping cost uh, per kilogram, which is uh, $1.20. Okay, so let's, let's type um, uh, shipping cost. So that will be the name of the variable. Okay, so shipping. And you don't have to do it this way. I just, yeah, but I would like to do it this way. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, so shipping uh, cost and assign it $1.20 like this. And now let's let's create the, the, the whole application. So what we need to do here uh, is basically just create a uh, if statement. Uh, so we type in if first and then we uh, type customer, let's see, customer cost. So if customer cost is more than $100, right? And then we would like to print, um, oh, let's indent a little bit, my bad. Then print, uh, let's see, customer, basket cost let's see cost like this okay so if customer uh, cost is um, I'm sorry customer basket cost my bad basket cost is uh, more than hundred dollars well then we are going to uh, uh, see the customer basket cost show up on the um, uh, in the console right here right and now what we need to do is add the else part of the, the statement uh, because if this condition is not met, right? If, if the customer basket cost is not above $100, we need something else to happen or something else uh, to show up on, on our, our console, right? And that will be the, um, the, the, um, the, basket, uh, the customer basket cost plus uh, the shipping cost um, uh, per uh, per kilogram, right? Uh, so uh, what we need to do here is just, as I said, just add else. Okay, we are not seeing it. So else like this. And what we are going to um, uh, do right now is just, as I mentioned, we need the uh, customer, let's see, customer basket cost, so what they've spent, right, plus the customer, customer uh, basket weight times uh, the uh, shipping cost, right, so uh, one, uh, $1.20 uh, times uh, 44, right, uh, so we type in shipping shipping let's see shipping cost like this and we are about done so let's run the code and we get 86.8 right so the first condition right here was not met right so the customer basket was not above hundred dollars so what was executed was um uh, the the uh, second condition right here right uh, which gave us 86.8, which is 34 plus uh, 44 times 1.20. Well, yeah, you get the um, you get the idea. You get 86.8, right? Uh, so let's take the uh, the flag right here and copy that and paste it right here and submit. And the next challenge is, let's see, in shipping.py on line 12, uh, change the customer basket cost variable to 101 and rerun your code. You will get a flag if the total cost is correct based on your code. The flag is the answer to this question. Okay, so let's go here and change that to 101 and let's rerun our code and I'm guessing <laughs> that we are going to get this print statement right here show up or this print statement is going to get get executed with other words uh, 101 is going to get executed right because now the customer basket cost is above 
$100. Okay, so let's run the code and see what happens. There you go, 101, perfect. Okay, so let's uh, copy the flag and paste it right here and submit. Perfect, and now let's move on to the next, uh, next um, uh, task, which is loops. In programming, loops allow programs to iterate and perform actions a number of times. There are two types of loops, for and while loops. While loops. Let's begin by looking at how we structure a while loop. We can have the loop run indefinitely or, similar to an if statement, determine how many times the loop should run based on a condition. This while loop will run 10 times, outputting the value of the i variable each time it iterates or loops. Let's break this down. The i variable is set to 1. The while statement specifies where the start of the loop should begin. Every time it loops, it will start at the top, outputting the value of i. Then it goes to the next line in the loop, which increases the value of i by 1. Then, as there is no more code for the program to execute, it goes to the top of the loop, starting the process over again. The program will keep on looping until the value of the i variable is greater, greater than 10. For loops. Uh, a for loop is used to iterate over a sequ sequence such as a list. Lists are used to store multiple items in a single variable and are created using square brackets. See below. Let's learn through the following uh, example. This for loop, uh, shown in the code block above, will run three times, outputting each website in the list. Let's break this down. The list variable uh, called websites uh, is storing three elements. The loop iterates through each element, printing, printing out the element. The program stops uh, looping when it's been through each element in the loop. To give a real uh, world scenario, you could create a program that checks if a website is online or if an item is in stock. You would loop through the website list add functionality inside the loop to check the website and output the results. The Python for Pentesters room show you how to use Python to enumerate a target, build a keylogger, scan a network and more. In Python, we can also iterate through a range of numbers using the range uh, function. Below is some example uh, Python code that will print the numbers from 0 to 4. In programming, zero is often uh, the starting number, so counting to five is zero to four, but it, but has numbers, uh, but has five numbers, zero, one, two, three, and uh, four. Uh, okay, uh, now on the code editor, click back on the script.py tab and code a loop that outputs every number from zero to 50. Okay, so let's click on script.py. Uh, and let's uh, type our code right here. Let's try again, delete it again. Let's see, there you go. Uh, okay, so what we need to do here is begin with the variable name, number, uh, which is assigned uh, the number zero. Uh, okay, you, you can, by the way, have another variable name. I just chose number because, well, uh, we're dealing with numbers now, okay? so. Yeah, that's why. But you can have yeah a different name if you want to. So number is assigned the number zero. And while, okay, so we're going to use the while loop here. Uh, not that you can also use the for loop, but again, I choose to use the while loop, okay? So while number is um, um, below or equal to 50, Uh, we would like to print the number. So we need the print statement and the variable name inside, which is number. And then below the print statement, we type number, the variable name, and then the variable name again, which uh, will increase by one. So then we type plus one, okay? And now let's run our code 
And what we are going to see uh, showing the console is, uh, well, yeah, uh, we'll see 0 to 50. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 50 show up in, in the console right here. So let's run the code and see if that's uh, the case. Well, yes, yes, it is. So we are correct. Okay, and here, here is our flag. So let's uh, copy the flag and paste it right here like this and move on to the next uh, task, which is introduction to functions, Bitcoin project. As programs start to get bigger and more complex, uh, some of your code will be repetitive, writing the same code to do the same calculations. And this is where functions come in. A function is a block of code that can be called at different places in your program. You could have a function to work out a calculations, uh, calculation uh, such as the distance between two points on a map or output uh, formatted text based on, a certain, uh, on certain conditions. Having functions uh, removes uh, repetitive code as the function's purpose can be used multiple times throughout a program. There are some key components we can note from the function that we see right here. Uh, so first we have the uh, def keyword, which indicates the beginning of a function. Uh, and then we have the function name, which is say hello. And then we have the parentheses, which hold a parameter. Uh, in this case, we have a parameter called name. Uh, so what we can do now is uh, pass some kind of a value to, to our function. Uh, and in this example right here, they pass the value ben, right? So they pass it inside the function right here. So name will then hold the... Um, the value ban, the string ban, and what will happen is that um, the print statement will execute and what uh, we are going to see in our consoles then is hello ban, nice to meet you, right? So let's say we change this to something else, like let's say a different name like uh, Michael, well then uh, this value will be passed uh, to the to the function right right here so then name will hold the value Michael and the print statement will print hello Michael nice to meet you uh, so yeah it's that simple and, and of course a uh, colon marks the end of the um, function header right so yeah you can see it right here in the function uh, notice the indentation similar to if statements anything after the colons that is indented uh, is considered a part of the function. Uh, a function can also return a result. See the code block below. Okay, so what we see right here. If we call the uh, calculate cost function or calc cost function and pass in uh, suites as the item uh, parameter, the function will return a decimal number. Or float. In the code above, we take a variable called spent and add the cost of suites through the calc cost, uh, calc cost uh, function. When we call calc cost, it will return the number 399. Okay, and now let's see what we need to do here. Uh, so you've invested in Bitcoin uh, and want to write a program that tells you when the value of Bitcoin uh, falls below a particular value in uh, dollars. In the code editor, click on the Bitcoin.py tab. Okay, let's do that. Uh, write a function called Bitcoin to USD with uh, two param parameters, uh, Bitcoin uh, amount, the amount of Bitcoin you own, and Bitcoin value USD, which is the value of Bitcoin in USD. Uh, the function should return uh, USD value, which is your Bitcoin value in uh, USD. Uh, to calculate this in, in the function, uh, you, you uh, multiply Bitcoin um, amount, uh, the Bitcoin amount variable by Bitcoin value USD variable and return the value. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, the start of the function should look like this, okay? So let's just copy that right away, like this, and uh, yeah, we can just, I'll just put it below the, uh, the comments, uh, like this. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, let's begin with uh, creating a uh, 
a uh, new variable inside the um, the uh, function, so which we can call, let's say, value uh, in uh, let's say USD. So value in USD. Okay, which will be uh, assigned Bitcoin uh, or the result of the uh, Bitcoin amount multiplied by Bitcoin value USD. Okay, amounts multiplied by uh, Bitcoin uh, value USD. Uh, okay, and then below what we need, uh, what we want to happen here is that the uh, uh, function will return the result to us. Let's see, return. So then we type return value in USD, right? Because you know when we take Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin amount multiplied by Bitcoin uh, value USD, the result the result is uh, assigned uh, to value in USD, which we would like uh, to be returned right here. So what we need to do next uh, is we go uh, on a new line. We can take another line like this. Go down another line and create a new. Um, a new variable which we can call my Bitcoin value. Okay, so let's do that. Bitcoin value like this. And then we are going to call our function, which is Bitcoin uh, to USD. And we are going to call it with uh, investment in Bitcoin. So 1.2, right? Um, and uh, Bitcoin to USD. So 40,000. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's let's just copy the, the name of the variables. Like this. Comma. And then we copy Bitcoin to USD and paste it right here. And we're almost done. Now, what we need to do here is um, is create the if statement. So we can create the if, step, if statement below here. So we type if, and then we have the parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we uh, type in our uh, new variable, right? For our our Bitcoin value, right? So we type in my uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin value, okay? And if my Bitcoin value is uh, uh, lower or below or equal to thirty thousand, right? We would like to print. Um, uh, your Bitcoin is worth less than 30,000. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so if my Bitcoin value, okay, is below or equal to 30,000, I would like the print, print statement uh, to say or to print to our console, as I said, your uh, Bitcoin is worth, let's say, worth less than 30,000, right? Else, okay, let's not forget the else part of the uh, uh, if else statement. Else, uh, let's see, I would like this to be printed to to the uh, to the console. So print your Bitcoin is worth more than than thirty thousand. Okay. Okay, so let's let's run the code and see which which um, which print statement is executed. So rerun code. 
and it looks like our uh, Bitcoin is worth more than 30,000. Great, okay? So now we have our flag. Again, if something is not clear here, uh, guys, just tell me, okay? Uh, if 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 yeah if I was not, if I was not clear enough uh, when I explained the um, the function and yeah the if statement just just tell me in the comment section okay and I'll try to explain again okay okay so let's copy our um, copy our flag paste it right here and submit perfect okay so everything looks good and now one Bitcoin is now worth twenty five thousand uh twenty five thousand dollars in the code editor on line 14 update the bitcoin to usd variable uh value to twenty five thousand and see if your python program recognizes that your investment is below the thirty thousand uh, dollar threshold okay so let's do that so we could go right here and change that to twenty five thousand and let's run our code and see what if statement is executed. And there you go. Your Bitcoin is worth less than 30,000. But actually, if if you do the math, is actually equal to uh, 30,000. Uh, 30, uh, uh, and that is why I actually added the, uh, the equal, um, equal operator. Or a le uh, I'm sorry, not equal operator, but um, uh, less than or equal to operator uh, in our condition, right? Uh, because if I didn't, um, if I only used uh, the less than uh, operator, well, then the um, um, the uh, print statement that would have executed is your Bitcoin is worth more than thirty thousand. So I had to actually. You know, add the um, as I said, the add the less than or equal to uh, operator uh, instead, uh, because um, yeah, one one point two bitcoins uh, times twenty five thousand uh, uh, dollars or USD uh, is equal to thirty thousand, right? And so obviously, if we had uh, the Bitcoin to USD was less than twenty five thousand, or or our Bitcoin was. Uh, a little bit less than what we have right now so one maybe one only one bitcoin and not not 1.2 then there's some that's something else but as i said right now with the data that we've been provided by uh my try hack me it's equal to thirty thousand, and that would have executed um yeah in the wrong in a way the wrong uh print statement with other words your bitcoin is worth more when we actually wanted to you know get the on the print statement that says that um, our Bitcoin is worth less. Okay, so I, I hope I hope that was clear enough. Again, if if I'm not clear enough, just tell me in the comment section, and you know I'll get right right back to you and explain explain everything again. Okay, okay. So now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is files. In Python, you can read and write from files. We've seen that in cybersecurity, it's common to write a script and import or export it from a file, whether that be as a way to store the output of your script or to import a list of hundreds of websites from a file to enumerate. Let's dive straight into an example. To open the file, we use the built-in open function, and the R parameter stands for read as it's, uh, and is used as we're reading the contents of the file. The variable has a read method for reading the contents of the file. You can also use the read lines method and loop over each line in the file. Useful if you have a list where each item is on a new line. In the example above, the file is in the same folder as the Python script. If it were elsewhere, you would need to specify the full path of the file. Uh, you can also create and write files. If you're writing to an existing file, you open the file first and use the A in the, um, in the open function after the file name called, which stands for append. If you're writing to a new file, you use W, write, uh, instead of A. Uh, see the examples below for clarity. 
Okay, and now notice we use the close method after writing to a file. This closes the file, so no more writing to the file uh, can occur uh, within the program, of course. Okay, now let's see what we need to do. In the code editor, write Python code to read the flag.txt file. What is the flag in this file? Okay, that will be pretty, or that is going to be pretty easy to do. So uh, let's go down here and let's create a variable called THM. Again, you can choose another variable name. I just choose, you know, chose THM because I felt like it because we are using try hack me. <laughs> so, so yeah, so THM will be assigned, uh, let's see, open. And then inside the, uh, the parentheses uh, of the open function, we are going to uh, write the, uh, the name of our file that we are trying to read. So flag.txt and then we have comma and then we type R because we are going to read, right? So R and then we are going to add the print statement below like this, print, open the parentheses and we type THM, oops thm dot read and then we have the parentheses right after read and I should just delete the code that I wrote before let's see let's do it like this and let's click on run code and there you go okay perfect uh, so let's copy our flag and paste it right here and we submit and we are done with uh, this task and now let's move on to the last uh, task which is imports. In Python we can import libraries which are a collection of files that contain functions. Think of importing a library as importing functions you can use that have been already written for you. For example, there is a date library that gives you access to hundreds of different functions for anything date and time related. We import other libraries using the import keyword. Then in Python, we use that imports library name to reference its functions. And of course, we have an example above here. Uh, here are some popular libraries you may find useful in scripting as a pen tester. So uh, request, simple HTTP library, scapy, send, sniff, dissect, and forge network packets, and uh, pawn tools, a CTF and exploit development library. Many of these libraries are already built into the programming language. However, libraries written by other programmers, programmers not already installed in your machine can be installed using an application called pip, which is Python's package manager. Let's say you want to install the SCAPI library, which allows you to craft your own packets in, um, in code and send them to other machines. You install it first by running the command pip install SCAPI, uh, after which in your program, you can now import the SCAPI library. And now let's see what we need to do here. Uh, read the task and run the Python example code above in the code editor on the right. Okay. So we copy and let's delete that. So let's run. And there you go. Here's uh, our uh, year and, um, and time, right? Uh, perfect. So uh, let's click on uh, complete it. And uh, yeah we are done with this room. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. Of course, if something was not clear enough, if I was going too fast or whatever, uh, just tell me and I'll try to explain uh, again in the comment section. Uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. Of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already, and I'll talk to you next time.